Next week, we are going to see and review Thor Love and Thunder. This is likely to be the biggest Marvel movie of the summer. I suspect it will do better than Doctor Strange, just on the pure basis that Doctor Strange, even as a title, Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, really, really sounds awfully cerebral. Thor Love and Thunder sounds pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty sexy. It sounds like a bit of a, I mean, I think it sounds like a bit of a throwback in terms of they're really leaning into the Thor comics from like the golden years of Thor comics, essentially. Even if you look at, they've got the goat boat in this movie. They've got uh, Christian Bale back in a comic book movie after he said he would never be in a comic book movie again, playing uh, Gore the God Butcher. Just think about a character named Gore the God Butcher. And yeah. That's all you need to know to know what this movie like how like what to expect from this film. And then you Honestly, of course that's have probably Natalie how Portman they got back. him back in. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's probably how they got him back in. They were like, "Hey, I mean, hey look, cuz these Christian Bale people forget, he's not just the guy who played Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy or he's done a bunch of faith-based movies in recent times. Christian Bale is a guy with a lot of range. Like he played he played what was it? He played Dick Cheney in that movie. I forgot what the name yeah. of the film was. Vice. Weiss. And and he, obviously we know him from what was it, American um, Psycho? Psycho. That's which I think my favorite I think he's leaning more into the American psycho part of his personality for this one. I love so. that. I love that side of his um, personality. No, it's um Yeah. He's great. You know what? That that'll give me a reason to go see it. I like Christian Bale a lot. That guy is a talented, committed, and interesting actor. I like that guy. I'm I think this movie, just to kind of to put a cap on this i i think this movie for me has the potential to be the best marvel movie of the year even though wakanda forever is also on docket for later this summer or is mm. it this it might be more like fall but it is coming out later this year we already had doctor strange in the multiverse of madness i don't think any of the other movies really count as 2022 because spider-man came out in 20 like december and then even the disney plus shows i mean miss marvel has been fantastic everything else has been sort of hit and miss I do mm -hmm. think Thor and Love and Thunder is going to be one of those movies that's going to be far less divisive than anything we have seen, especially since Spider-Man No Way Home. And even, even if you look back before Spider-Man No Way Home, Shang-Chi had a great reception, but yeah. Black Widow was eh. I think most of the dis like Loki, Captain America, well, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, even WandaVision for me was a little hit or miss. I, I, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I think Thor Love and Thunder is probably my... Other than Miss Marvel, and even Moon Knight, ugh, couldn't stick the landing. But I, I'm hoping Miss Marvel does stick the landing. But Thor: Love and Thunder might be like the movie which I will unabashedly like the, for the first time an MCU property since Shang Chi, that I will have no complaints about. That's that's my hope. And I I'm gonna cross my hope. fingers and hope for the same thing. Yeah, I'm look. There's just so much. The the movie looks so much fun. That, that's that's what it comes down to. I can't wait to see the awkward conversations between uh, Natalie Portman's Jane and Cassandra Thor and that relationship being rekindled somehow. And and it looks like we have rumors the are somebody's the galaxy gonna die. people coming back also. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe well, they should have her intern come back too. Kat Dennings' character. I forgot what, what her oh name was. Kat Dennings. Yeah, yeah. She's, she always had something good. I, w I wouldn't mind seeing her back in this movie somehow. She was in last scene in WandaVision. I don't know if they've completely sectioned her off into the Miss Marvel character sphere right now, or hopefully, because this is where she started. She was Jane's assistant in the first two Thor movies. I'm hoping they go back, I'm, even if it's just a cameo. You know, I don't. I don't know why of that's, all the people that's that what I, these that things are at the end of the day, though. Yeah. It's like. I'm expecting a lot of cameos. We'll see if they commit to the uh, to the John Krasinski Mr. Incredible or Mr. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm sorry. No, I think that I think they were done with that. It was like a one and done, it seems like. Although there thought. was yeah. apparently the mid credit scene in this movie is like meant to blow people's minds because it's some kind of like big cameo. Holy crap, what the hell kind of a moment. All right. I don't know so okay. much about the end credit, but mid credits, I think, is that's the scene that's supposed to get people's attention. So, 
Okay, Marvel. We'll see what you got. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be next week on the show. Oh, so curious. A couple of curious minds looking at uh, looking at stuff happening in the world on the movies and the screens and all the stuff you're watching. If you're enjoying it, watch the show. Subscribe, like, and tell your friends. We're here every Sunday, and we are letting you know what's going on throughout the week on Instagram and Twitter and all those other places. Hang out with us. This has been Oh, So Curious.